So, we have been looking at planning and uh, the last thing that we talked about was the fact that there are two things you are doing when you are doing planning. One is deciding what actions should go into the plan and the other is where that action should be placed in the plan essentially. So, these are two events which for example, forward state space planning and backward state space planning they do it uh, in one go. Forward state space planning starts searching from the start state to the goal state and constructs the plan uh, in that order. Backward state space planning starts with searching from the goal state to the start states and start constructs the plan by choosing the last action first, then the second last action and so on. Goal stack planning searches from the goal, but constructs plans from the start state essentially. But it is either a sequence of actions from the start to the goal or from the goal to the start in all these examples. In plan space planning, we saw that there was a possibility of adding actions uh, and uh, perhaps not even committing to their order, because if there are actions which can be done in parallel, then the plans, uh, plan space planning approaches would not commit to them. That is why we also called it least commitment planning. But most of the time when we plan as human beings, we do not necessarily do it in this fashion where we say, okay, I am in this given state, what is the next action I can do? Sometimes we think of what is the most important action in the overall plan and that is an approach which was given to us uh, more than 50 years ago uh, by Simon and Newell and in their seminal work called Human Problem Solving, which was written in uh, the last century, middle of the last century. Uh, Newell and Simon proposed the general purpose strategy for problem solving, which is what we are also trying to do here, which they call as general problem solver. So, they wrote this program called general problem solver and they encapsulated the heuristic approach, which they call as means ends analysis. So, we want to look at that now. So, what they say is that you compare the current state with the desired state. You first, you know, take a global view of this whole thing. That is how humans tend to operate and you list the differences between the current state and the desired state. There may be more than one difference. Evaluate the differences in terms of magnitude. In some way, you identify what is the largest difference and then what are smaller differences and so on and their general approach is that to solve the largest differences first essentially or to address the largest differences first, which can be done using something called an operator difference table. So, you have a set of operators available to you and they also tell you what difference they address essentially. We will see an example. And they say reduce the largest or the most important differences first essentially. Uh, so, if you think of how you plan your things, you always identify what is the most important thing that you need to do for that plan. And say that, okay, let me address that first, then we look at the other issues later. The differences characterize the ends that have to be, need to be achieved. So, this is what you need, these are the difference you want to reduce and the operators define the means uh, that you have for achieving those ends. So, the differences are the ends that you have to solve or, or reduce and the operators are the means and that is where the name means ends analysis comes from. So, that the general approach is following that if you want to achieve goal G from some given state S, they say reduce the largest difference between the goal G from the state S. How do you reduce the largest difference? Then they look for operators uh, which uh, do this for you. So, let us say there are k operators, operator 1, operator 2 up to operator k and they have to somehow decide which operator to use. So, let us say they choose this middle operator here and they say that achieve to apply that operator O i, which is what has been selected, you must achieve the preconditions of that operator before that operator can be applied essentially. 
So, in some sense this has this backward flavor also a little bit that uh, you can only apply an operator if its preconditions are made true and that is you are still in the state S essentially. Then they say once you have achieved those preconditions and we have left it as a gray box because you know it may not have yet been completely done, but at some point that recursive structure would have taken care of it and that would have been solved. And once you come back to this state, when you have achieved the preconditions O i of state S, then you can apply O i in the state S to generate a new state S prime essentially. So, you have reduced the largest differences. Remember, we first say that we will reduce the largest differences and then we will address the other differences and they have found a way of reducing the largest difference. And now, you are in a new state S prime. Now, you can go back to your original problem and you can say that okay, now you achieve goal G from this new state S prime that we have reached essentially. Now, this is as you can see this diagram looks a little bit like a tree, but it is got these extra uh, arcs connecting edges together in these two places here. And uh, these arcs stand for the fact that both edges have to be addressed. You have to reduce the largest difference and then from that state S prime that you achieve, you have to then achieve the rest of the goal. So, there is a notion of an and here. Our normal choices that we make in a tree, so any search tree is like an or, either do this or do this or do that essentially. But and says do what is in the left branch and also do what is in the right, right branch and this in this example, there is an ordering. You first do what is in the left branch and then you go and do what is in the right branch. But this is the general strategy that they use and they construct what is called an and or tree, which is what we will study in this course uh, uh, after we are done with planning. And the shaded nodes are the ones for which recursive calls have yet to be made essentially. So, we will take a small example uh, to understand this whole process and this is how typically we as humans also do planning and in fact, their book was called human problem solving and they were trying to study. Remember that uh, uh, Simon was uh, a multifaceted person, he was an economist and psychologist and all kinds of stuff including computer science. Uh, so, their book was called human problem solving. So, just let us see that how you would address this problem that if you want to plan a trip to Parashar Lake which is in Himachal and you are sitting here in IIT Madras, uh, what do you do? We measure the differences in terms of distances. Okay. Basically, you can think of it as that there is some distance from IIT Madras to Parashar Lake, but there are different kinds of distances that we will see in a moment. And we look at these distances in the light of operators that can be reduced that can reduce the, these differences essentially. So, we will see in a moment. The operator difference table could look like the following and this is a generic table. It has nothing to do with IIT Madras or Parasha. It says that if the distance is more than 5000 kilometers, then the mode of transport you can use is an uh, aeroplane. Between 100 and 5000, you can use an aeroplane, you can use a train or you can use a car. 1 kilometer to 100 kilometers, train, car, taxi, bus. And less than 2 kilometers, you can use a car, you can use a bus, maybe you can even use a taxi, I mean it does not matter what I have written there. But this is the nature of the op operator difference table. So, these are the, this is the largest difference and this is the operator that you can use to solve the largest difference. And then as differences become smaller, more operators can be used essentially. This is just to illustrate the, the, the problem. So, what is your uh, problem you are trying to solve that you are sitting here in IIT Madras and you want to be in Parashar Lake and you consult your operator difference table and you see that the differences are geographical distances in this case and the means that you have available for reducing those differences are flights, trains, bus, taxi or walking. So, you reduce the largest difference and let us say that it happens to be the case that you can take a flight from Chennai to Delhi airport. Of course, now, nowadays there are flights from Chennai to Chandigarh which is actually a larger difference, but let us say this is the case. You plan to take a flight from Chennai to 
Delhi. Now, this is how typically we as humans would plan that if I want to go to Himachal, then how do I get there? What is the largest thing I have to do? I have to, I have to think of a flight and then I will worry about uh, other things like uh, how do I go from IIT Madras to Chennai airport? You solve that recursively. How do you go from Delhi airport to Parashar? You solve that also recursively. So, let us say this is what your solution is. You, t you take a taxi from IIT Madras to Chennai airport and you take a bus, let us say from Delhi airport to Mandi essentially. You are still left with some differences which you have not solved. How do you get from Mandi to Parashar Lake? Now, if you are familiar with that region, you would know that you can take a bus uh, and then you can walk after the bus or you can take a taxi all the way or if you are really a serious taker, you could walk all the way from Mandi to Parashar. Okay. So, this is the general strategy of uh, mean sense analysis. Reduce the largest differences first and as humans, we would say, okay, how do I get close to uh, Himachal and then I will worry about the rest. And the important thing here in the context of planning that we are saying is that we have selected an action which happens in the middle of our plan first. So, the other algorithms do not really allow us to do that even when the plan is sequential in nature essentially. We will, we will come back to mean sense analysis a little bit uh, later uh, in a slightly different context. Another way to we do planning is hierarchical planning is that you say, okay, I am planning a holiday to Himachal, that is a high level operator. And then what are the conditions, let us say for this high level operator planning a holiday? For example, that I have, I have money to travel. I have leave to travel and there are various means available to, and then I can do the detailed planning. Then you can say, okay, I will, I will do this and then I will do that. You break down a high level plan to lower level plans and hierarchical planning is also something that we do very often. Unfortunately, we do not have time to look at it in detail essentially. So, here for example, these three are the preconditions for your high level plan to be, high level operator to be selected, uh, which as I said could be things like you have leave and you have time and uh, you have money. And then of course, you refine that high level plan into a more detailed plan and that is the approach taken in hierarchical planning essentially. But we will not have time to look into that. What we will do and the last thing we will do in planning is to look at this algorithm called graph plan, which was uh, devised uh, in the mid 90s and it gives us an entirely new approach to planning. Okay. So, we will do that next. <laughs>